Hey kids, it's Thursday and that means I'm here with Queens of the Week. Alright, this week our topic is from Katana Ray, and this topic is masculinity. What makes somebody masculine? Hmm, I was interviewed recently on an internet program called The Gates of Will, and he wanted me to talk about masculinity as well, and the gay community specifically. But what makes, and I'll put a link in the bottom if I can find it, but it was a really good interview, and it was a really good topic. Um, you would enjoy it. Um, Masculinity. Growing up in my family as the son of a minister and um, a very religious family, I think that it was obvious I was a little gay boy ever since I was nine years old at the very least. I mean, probably much earlier, but I remember at nine, I was very, very gay or effeminate, meaning I would, you know, cover my ha hair in um, a towel and pretend I had long hair and things like that, and I would be caught wearing my sister's skirt and spinning around because I wanted my skirt to go out really big and, you know, things like that. So I think that um, my stepdad developed a very warped idea of masculinity and I guess tried to be the most masculine he could in trying to be like a father figure to me um, and growing up I had a really warped idea of masculinity like he refused to touch lotion anything lotion or um, skincare of any kind he refused to even go near it oh no 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 you know that's for girls by the way you could be masculine and a man and take care of your skin and put lotion on your hands or feet or elbows or whatever you need it. It's not feminine to take care of yourself. Um, and things like that. Like, there was a lot of things that he refused to let me do because he felt they were effeminate. Um, you know, but what makes somebody masculine? Um, well, let me tell you what I don't think means masculine. It's not masculine to sit at home and be lazy and drink beer and abuse your wife. That does not make you masculine. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and in fact, I was in a good friend of mine's house recently. For the first time in his house, but we've been friends for a long time. And he's um, in the leather community. In fact, he's a daddy and he is very masculine. But it was right after Christmas and I was in his house. And <laughs> it shocked me how... For the lack of a better word, granny he is in his decorations. Um, he His house really reminded me of an old lady. There are definite masculine things like, you know, leather paraphernalia and things around decorating his house as well, but he also had a lot of like kitschy old lady decorations. And I was like, wow, you know, my idea of what a masculine leather daddy would have was not this. So that just goes to show you that masculinity has nothing to do with fashion or design or decoration because he is masculine and respected within the community as a daddy, but it just shocked me. So my idea of masculinity has changed a little bit, but I've never really felt that those things really define masculinity. I guess um, the truest form of the answer would be masculine versus feminine in that a feminine person, you know, is flailing and, you know, sits with her legs crossed and is more delicate and soft. And a masculine man would be more hard or you know, aggressive or dominant and, um, you know, but I think sexuality as well as masculinity is fluid. I think that people sway back and forth on their, their walkway. You know, you're still on the same, you know, let's say it's America's Next Top Model runway. You're still on the same runway. You could be all over that runway, but it doesn't mean you're off the runway. 
you know, you're still in the same fashion show, walking the same garment. Even if you sway back and forth, you're still going down that same path. Um, I think that it's okay for masculine men to cry. In fact, I think it's very, very healthy for people to show emotion. Um, the more you guard yourself and deny expression of emotion, the more you're robbing yourself of your true being. Um, I think that the more deeply you're able to feel, the more you're able to love and, um, long story short, I think that the more deeply you're able to feel, the better sex life you can have. That has nothing to do with masculine versus feminine, you know, but I think a lot of times the gay community itself gets very caught up. Um, when we first come out of the closet, a lot of times, at least I was, flaming. I wanted it to be in your face. You know, it was funny because I wasn't even out of the closet. I was going to Christian school and I was still like, hey, what's up? Wearing the shortest shorts I could find and, you know, just kind of like pop. I wanted people to be gagged. I wanted people to be like, whoa, you know, I was very in your face. Um, and then I think as people get older, they start to not try so hard. They become comfortable in their skin, for example. Um, and it's weird because the gay community is the only community that I can think of where opposites don't attract. In that um, lesbians, straight people, example, masculine is attracted to feminine opposites attract. Very In the animal community as well, most often opposites attract. I remember when I did a, a paper on homosexuality in the Bible, um, I did a lot of research and one of the causes that they used to think made people homosexual was masturbation. They were afraid that if they let people masturbate, they would love themselves too much and therefore be attracted to people that were like them and therefore be gay. And that was really funny to me, like, oh God, just because you lo masturbate does not make you homosexual. It doesn't. I still believe that um, girls can masturbate, men can masturbate, does not make you gay at all. Straight people masturbate just as much as gay people. Um, but the idea of narcissism has always s struck me a little bit in my brain. And watching the gay community, it kind of is true. Um, it's kind of the chicken or the egg to me, which came first. Did you date the bear because you love yourself and you're a bear? Or did you date the twink because you love yourself and you're a twink? Or did you, you know, like that? Or, I also think it's partially because we become what we're attracted to. Now, it makes sense that if you are attracted to a muscle-bound Cretan, that you would also want to be something he's attracted to, therefore you start to emulate what you find attractive so that they find you attractive, and we kind of become the guys that we are attracted to. You know, like if you like guys with goatees, you might grow a goatee. If you like guys with beards, you might get a beard. If you like guys with long hair, you grow your hair long. If you like guys with short hair, you cut your hair short. Which is kind of weird, because again, opposites would ideally attract. You know, I was talking with one of my friends, Jason, who was also a leather daddy and um, a prominent person in the leather community. And I was like, you know, if it was a perfect world, we'd be a couple, big strong man and a big strong woman. You know, leaders, pillars of our community representing an ideal relationship. But no, the drag queen, it would be like a straight person where we are attracted to opposites, but he would definitely probably be attracted to a, a, a a little or a leather person or a little masculine man or whatever is what I was going to say. Um, and I find that very weird. Whereas I would date a drag queen, definitely, but ideally I too am attracted to masculinity. But the original question is what makes somebody masculine? Um, I don't really know how to answer that question. It's a fluid answer. It's, I guess the truest form is how you carry yourself. Do you flail? Do you scream? Do you swish? Do you, you know, are you flaming? Somebody that's flaming would be the opposite of masculinity. I guess this is hard for me to answer because it is so fluid for me in my mind. 
it's not a cut and dry obvious choice or obvious answer. But I guess the official answer that I'm going to give you is masculinity is of the mindset. It doesn't matter if you have grandma decorations in your house or if you have a fashion wardrobe or if you take care of your skin or get manicures or pedicures or facials. That has nothing to do with masculinity. I think it's truly in your mindset. If you're comfortable in your being as being a man and you're comfortable being a man, that would make you masculine. Yeah. I don't even know if I answered this question at all. Anyways, that was Misty Eyes with Queens of the Week. Loving you is easy. Bye.